Supreme Magus, Chapter 74, Mock Exam 3 Center's head snapped back on impact, losing control of its flight and letting the prey go. To make things worse, Lid quickly snapped his finger in succession, generating several flashes of light and booms near the crone's head, making it blind and deaf. Damn, I took my sweet time enjoying her screams. And that's what I get in return. I was no crone. More like a sitting duck. Now I can't even get where's the up and down. If I crash land because of a pup, the boss will never let me hear the end of it. Lit would have liked to keep striking the iron while it still was hot. But the black-haired girl was plummeting like a brick. Cursing her stupidity, Lid swooped down with a swing motion, first down then up, to avoid breaking her ribs during the catch. The rescue was successful, but judging from the smell, Lid understood that she was relieved from fear on several levels. What the heck were you doing? He yelled in her ear, thinking how ridiculous were in real life those romantic moments in action movies right after the hero saves the damsel in distress. Between the smell and the impending danger, there was no space for romance and tender one-liners. The only thing they both wanted was a safe heaven and a hot bath. Don't you know for magic? Why didn't you let it drag you around like a sack of potato? More importantly, do you know a fly spell? She nodded while holding him tight with both arms and legs, like she was trying to get inside his clothes. Then go ahead and use it. My spell is not meant for two. I can only glide while carrying you around. Once that thing recovers, we will be doomed. Do something. Remember they are watching us. Free from the grip of fear, she realized that the whole staff of the academy had been spectating at her humiliating performance. The girl became purple from head to toe for a second before letting him go and chanting her flight spell. Let's get the others and retreat. In the open, we are too disadvantaged. They both quickly returned to the ground, pulling the others three back on their feet and literally kicking their butts to force them to recover from terror and get them moving. Take flight fast, Lit yelled. We have no hope of shacking them off on foot, but keep close to the ground. The crown will turn us in mincemeat if we try to fight in its element. To his teammates, Lit words sounded those of a strong and experienced leader that had full control of the situation. The reality, though, like the professor Kusa says while fast palming, was that he was just remembering them common sense. This year's batch is awful, said Scarlett in his communicator amulet. They always are on the fourth year, Linjos replied with a sigh. Remember our pact and don't be stingy. I want their weight worth in meat, and I mean the good stuff, no bones or nerves. And tell your servants to play by the rules. You don't want to see me getting ugly. Linjos had the communicator in conference call mode so everyone could listen. The professors didn't like being called servants, but they understood very well that in the wilderness, the strong ruled above all. The Scorpion Corps help guaranteed that no student would be seriously harmed before being rescued, not to mention that such a powerful guardian defending the academy was worth far more than just meat. They were truly blessed by having a monster at their disposal reasonable enough to be useful but stupid enough to not understand its true value. After closing the communication, Scarlet had a small grin on its feline snot. Imbeciles, I don't care about the meat. I would do it even for free. Your stupid lessons allow me to train the magical beast in anti-magician tactics. They uh, use us as sparring partners, but that's a game that two can play. 
Another bonus is that when the fifth year students train in the forest, I get updated about the tactics they employ and the spells they teach. I bet they sleep much better at night, believing me a dumb monster that only wants food in its belly. Meanwhile, M. Rook had joined the fray and was rapidly catching up with Lid's group using air magic to move faster and his sense of smell to not lose their traces. Lid was on the verge of tears. This experience was a full-blown disaster. He was sick and tired of playing babysitter. But what choice did he have left? He slowed down, detaching from the group, appearing beside the right. It followed a quick exchange of spells, since Lit never allowed them Rook to get close to him. He kept moving in all three dimensions, gaining a tactical advantage, since the magical beast was only relying on its legs to maneuver around. Lit wasn't trying to harm it, he used only tier 1 and 2 spells in a quick succession with the aim to ruin the opponent's focus and slowing down its movements. Who the heck is this pup? Emrook thought, gritting its teeth, raising in frustration. It's like he learned how to fight from a ride. He anticipates almost all my moves, but that's impossible. In the Tran Woods, Protector's ears were burning. Lit used a fine mist to detect incoming invisible wind blades while moving around with no pattern to avoid lightnings. After stumbling on a conjured wand, Emrook finally lost it, jumping with all his strength trying to catch the pup with the jaws. Imbecile. That's what I was waiting for. You can dodge in mid-air. Lit and Scarlet thought as one. Checkmate, Spears. Lit yelled, releasing the tier 3 spell stored in his ring. Thanks to various experiments, he had learned that he could store even charge up to 3 true magic spells, as long they didn't exceed the ring's capacity. Hence, he was able to unleash his most powerful spell in its empowered version in a split of a second. Emrook whimpered when thousands of ice spears as thick and as long as small trees encircled him from all directions before crashing against its body. Their mass was too big to deflect them with a single air barrier, and fire could, would need time to melt so much ice before rendering it harmless. Desperate, Emrook used its strong attack, Flaming Tornado, on itself. By combining its best fire and air spells, Emrook used the strong winds to deflect the spears from its vitals, hoping for the scorching hot temperatures to smooth down their deadly extremities. When the tornado disappeared, Emrook was alive and well, but his body was beaten and battered with countless small wounds. Between the spell and his thick fur, the spears hadn't managed to pierce it, but they still hit like a truck. Lid wasn't there to gloat or deal another blow. He had already returned to the grip, yelling trivial instructions. Use the first magic darkness conceal. You idiots, do you think a rhyme knows is for decoration? Hide your smell now. He took out some old clothes from the pocket dimension, turning them into shreds with air magic and sprinkled them with a sweet he had always forgot to throw away since the run to Professor Vaster's first lesson. Then lit through the shreds in the wind, hoping to create multiple false leads to the magical beast to follow. Not to be the leader of the situation, but I don't think your group would last a week. Solus giggled at her own joke. Sherlock, I bet we will be wiped out by tomorrow. Tomorrow is too soon. My bed is full annihilation within three days. Deal. They kept flying for about ten minutes before feeling safe enough to take a break. The group had come across a small hill about 10 meters high. With the backs against something solid, they could finally catch their breath. Lid scanned the surroundings with life vision, allowing himself to relax only after finding 
nothing stronger than a normal beast in the surroundings. How many hours do you think have passed since the exam started? Asked the boy looking around like a cornered mouse. Less than one, Lit replied after checking the sun's position. But it felt so much longer, said the tallest of the black-haired girls. All of them had a dejected expression. There was no trace left of their previous overbearing pride. Lit brought the index fingers against his lips, remembering them to be quiet. Then he started circling around the hill. The other four promptly followed him, forming a single line. Oh, your ducklings are so cute, Mother Goose, Solus said. Lid made a complete lap, checking for caves. They had been lucky, there was none. A natural cave was too much of a convenient asset to be left vacant, and he couldn't afford to drive off wildfire with the risk of being exposed. After choosing a spot devoid of grass or wines, he used earth magic to create an artificial cave by condensing the porous soil and turning it hard enough to hold the improvised selling. At the same time, Lee erected a small stone pillars to support the whole structure. It wasn't much, but still big enough for all of them to sit and rest comfortably. While the others were looking at him in a daze, he added more pillars along the walls. He wasn't an engineer and preferred to be safe rather than sorry. The boy walked towards Lid with a big smile and holding out his hand. I'm not gonna to touch any of you until you have cleaned yourself properly. I suggest using darkness magic. It will clean the dirt and remove the smell. After everyone was cleansed, Lit used first magic to close the entrance with a thick layer of earth and to lie the inside of the cave. Then he pretended to cast a spell while activating Hush, generating a small air dome. Thanks to that, no sound nor smell can escape, so we can talk freely. I'd say that our introductions are long overdue. I'm Lit from Lutia, and I'm supposed to be the healer. His voice was exuding sarcasm. Several kilometers away, Termin and Amruk had finally collected all the cloth shreds, destroying them to not be swayed anymore by their strong smell. Center landed near them, ready to report. Can't find them anywhere. It's like they disappeared. Same, replied Amruk. Aside from these things, I can't smell them any longer. Boss, we need your trinket. Scarlet scoffed. That would be unfair. It's you versus them. I'm just enjoying the show. You'll wait until afternoon before resuming the search. You need some time to heal properly and they deserve a little rest.